All right, guys, with version 10 on the horizon, I thought I'd make a video to sort of finalize and review where version nine autopilot left off and use that as a baseline to compare to see how much version 10 has improved. So we're gonna talk about version nine autopilot, the final builds of it, if you will, coming right up, stay tuned. All right, so we're talking about autopilot and we're talking about the final stages of V9, again, as a basis of comparison for when V10, which is on the horizon and should be coming in the next few weeks, uh, is going to entail and how it's going to improve on V9. Okay, so first, let's, let's get the basics out of the way. We're talking autopilot. We're talking about the best in class, the best in breed of semi-autonomous capabilities in cars. Uh, Tesla has a game changer in its autopilot the data it's collected, as well as the fleet that it has at its disposal to collect additional data. Uh, and it's the best in class, right? I'm talking about Super Cruise, I'm talking about, about Pro Pilot Assist and all the others. Tesla Autopilot is the absolute best when it comes to semi-autonomous capabilities in car in production cars right now. Uh, Super Cruise is great, but it's limited access highways only. Autopilot you can use virtually anywhere. So that gives it the edge, okay? It's not a true hands-off system. It does require you to have a single hand on the wheel to engage the, the steering wheel and to engage the computer and let it know that you're aware. But other than that, it works pretty flawless to de-stress your drive as well as be able to, uh, to assist the human driver on long journeys, right? To be able to take some of the weariness of taking, of taking long monotonous drives, stop and go traffic, et cetera, out of here. Okay, so this is what we're talking about here. And let's also get some, some definitions and some terms out of the way. We're gonna talk about Autopilot 1, which again is the mobile eye camera, right? So that's a single trifocal camera. So if your car has just a single camera up here and no repeating cameras around the side, you have Autopilot 1. We're also gonna talk about Autopilot 2, which is the Tesla vision system with Tesla computer, right? So that's MCU 1. And then we're, we're talking about Autopilot 2.5, which is the Tesla Vision system, but you also have the newer computer, also known as MCU2, right? Upcoming, and maybe if you have a brand new Model 3 or Model S or Model X as of the last month or so, you probably have Hardware 3 or Autopilot 3, which is the Tesla full self-driving computer also known as Hardware 3. We're not gonna talk about that right now because that's gonna be more beneficial when we start talking about full self-driving, but right now, this video is gonna focus on Autopilot 1, Autopilot 2, and 2.5, okay? So in terms of Autopilot. So when we talk about Autopilot, again, semi-autonomous capabilities, the way you enable it, if you have a Model S or a Model X, there's a stalk down here that you can double tap towards you to activate Autopilot, and as you see here, that's what it looks like. Shows you the surrounding car, shows you the lane lines, it's awesome. If you have the Model 3, you're gonna tap down twice on your gear selector lever to be able to do that. If you have a Model S or X, you also have a, a knob at the end of that same autopilot stock that you can use to adjust the distance, as you see here. If you have a Model 3, you're gonna be using your scroll wheels on your wheel to be able to do that. But right now, as of now, this is the latest and greatest of what autopilot has to offer available to the general public. And what we're looking at here is a great increase in the functionality from when it first came out all the way to now. So when we look at this version nine, we're talking about one, if you have Tesla vision system, autopilot two and 2.5, you have an amazing vision system that's able to recognize the lane lines extremely well. In varying conditions, it, it recognizes extremely well over autopilot one, all right? So we're gonna talk about the things that it does really well. We're also gonna talk about the things that it needs some improvement on and what we hope to see in version 10. When we talk about Autopilot 1, 2, and 2.5, we have to differentiate. The thing that differentiates now Autopilot 1 is just the fact that Autopilot 1 does handle merging lane lines better than Autopilot 2 and 2.5. That's still an advantage that Autopilot 1 has over Autopilot 2. Other than that, Autopilot 2 is superior in every other way. Okay? In addition to that, when we talk about autopilot uh, one, you have the disadvantage of only being able to see out the three focal cameras in the front. You can't see the surround view. You can't see cars coming in your blind spot and things of that nature. So 
that that's consistent and has been consistent with Autopilot One. They basically discontinued uh, future updates and future support for Autopilot One. So if you have it, enjoy it for what it can do, which is handle lanes very well in terms of lane keeping, acceleration and deceleration. But it's not going to be able to handle the surround view. It's not going to be able to tackle blind spot capabilities and blind spot monitoring. You're not going to get emergency lane avoidance and all of the new features that, that are coming out for the new Tesla Vision based system. Uh, but you are going to be able to handle merging roads better than Autopilot 2 and 2.5. Okay, so Autopilot 2 and 2.5, as you can see here in stop and go traffic, is phenomenal. It handles the lane perfectly in terms of keeping you centered. It handles stop and go and keeping its distance, whatever you set, very well. And it also has a good representation, a visual representation of the cars all around it. Okay, a large number of cars. That's also an advantage over Autopilot 1 in that regard. It shows you more cars, more data than Autopilot 1 is capable of showing you, right? Both to the left and right and further down the road, right? So these are the great things about Autopilot 2 and 2.5 uh, going, you know, ending off in version 9 is that it does this very well, accelerates, decelerates very smooth, slows down very smooth. I like to live a little bit dangerously. So I like to set my distance to one, but you can set it to whatever you'd like and autopilot will comply, right? I have a hand on the wheel just to keep it compliant, but otherwise it's pretty flawless. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I can't imagine driving without it going into the future. Uh, this, is, this is definitely going to be the future tech, the now tech and going into the future. So talk about the things that it does well. Again, lane recognition, handling uh, weather, if it's raining or if it's pouring down, it'll give you degrees of confidence by telling you that autopilot is disabled, poor weather is detected, things of that nature. It handles auto lane changing very well. It also handles the navigate on autopilot functionality very well where it's able to do its own thing without you. So I'll go ahead and toggle that on right now as I select the destination for my supercharging. And it's now gonna change over once it gets to the destination and now it's gonna change into navigate on autopilot where it will navigate and also make lane changes, speed-based lane changes on its own. So this is again, a feature that Autopilot 2 and 2.5 have over Autopilot 1, and it is phenomenal as well. Uh, because of the way that it makes lane changes, now we're starting to dip into some of the things that it doesn't do well, is that it doesn't look to, to accelerate to overtake vehicles when it makes a lane change. It looks to decelerate pretty aggressively, I might add. So if it needs to make a lane change to get into this lane, it's gonna decelerate pretty quickly to be able to do that. And that could cause problems for the, for the driver behind you. Right, so I would, I would love for it to accelerate past or slow down smoothly to get to make the lane change as opposed to slowing down very abruptly. That's one of the bad things it does right now. The only main other issue that I have with Autopilot 2 and 2.5 in version nine is the fact that it doesn't handle merging lanes very well. When a lane line is recognized for Autopilot, as you see here, it looks to center the vehicle in the lane. And that's great for most of the lanes that you see here, but where it's not great is where you have a merging lane. That means a lane that comes in here. I'll wait till we get to the light so I can show you what that looks like. You have a solid lane line and then you have a merge, right? So a merge coming in and then the lane is sort of divided and wider. And what the car tends to do, see if it stops with this guy, very good. Cut in detection, working. Uh, what, it's, what it seeks to do is it seeks to center you as the lanes start to converge. And what winds up happening is you start turning towards that merging lane, which presents a pretty awkward situation because to the driver behind you, it looks like you're getting ready to turn off or pull over to the shoulder when actually your car is just getting centered. So that's something that it doesn't handle very well. What it should be doing is it should follow the straight path, follow the singular line forward and not look to center you as, uh, as the lane merges. This is something Autopilot 1 does exceptionally well, and it's the one key factor that it does better than Autopilot 2 and 2.5. It's super crowded. Uh, stop and go traffic and this is where it really de-stresses your drive makes it a real pleasure and ease again autopilot 1 2 and 2.5 all will give you this benefit of being able to be in traffic and just relax and not have to worry about it beyond this what we're talking about in terms of the bad uh, is just the fact that right now it's only showing traffic going in one direction it doesn't show traffic coming other directions so sometimes you're in a sort of a undivided lane situation where you're using autopilot and you want to be able to see cars coming the other direction doesn't show that doesn't uh, adhere to stop signs and and sort of uh, traffic intersections and traffic lights etc 
uh, unless it's an emergency situation where you have the emergency stoplight warning. Other than that, it doesn't adhere to them locally. And it doesn't show any type of cross traffic, any type of traffic that goes left and right to see what the cars are doing in that direction. So those are all steps towards full self-driving. We're, look we're looking to get those in version 10, but right now this is what version nine is going to give you. This is what it's going to give you and it's gonna give you a plethora of features that again, make it very, very easy. Again, some a lot, a lot good and also some bad. All right, there's also the concept of phantom braking when we're talking about bad, where you go down the road and maybe you hit this overpass over here and all of a sudden the speed zones cross and autopilot starts to phantom brake automatically and abruptly. Uh, that may cause a problem. It may cause startle the driver. It may startle the person behind you So still need some work on that whatever the problem is whatever the root cause is would love to see that addressed an autopilot inversion I specifically um, also gives us the ability to Take exits on ramps and off ramps, etc uh, and, and interchanges I should say off ramps and interchanges It allows you to take and it'll take you all the way off the off ramp geofenced and then it will resume in regular autopilot and then it will allow you to take over and do with as you see fit. So that's pretty good. So as I'm trying to drive to my destination, autopilot is scanning the environment. It's making sure that uh, I'm in the fastest lane possible to get me to my destination. And if I'm in the fast lane too long, it'll tell me to get out and get into the slower lane to not block off the fast lane. And that was an initial problem that came out with, with version nine and autopilot. And excuse me, with Navigate on autopilot, Tesla quickly remedied after hearing some feedback from owners such as ourselves and now we're able to uh, have that feature rolled in. So that's pretty good. It handles cut-ins, it predicts cut-ins, it predicts merging in the lane. And when you come in that merging lane that I talked about before, it'll predict cars that are there and slow down accordingly to let them pass. So that's also a great feature of Autopilot 2 in version nine. Also, we gotta talk about vehicle recognition. Um, right now, the car recognizes other cars and renders them and such. It also recognizes SUVs, trucks, in terms of semis, buses. It also recognizes motorcycles. That's pretty much the extent of the vehicles that are visualized. I would love to see in version 10, and obviously some of the leaks already indicate that, more differentiation, uh, pickup trucks perhaps, uh, different types of motorcycles, school buses, things of that nature. Uh, as well, and then varying sizes of SUVs, not just regular mid-sized SUVs, maybe some of the larger SUVs, the Cadillac Escalades of the world um, and such, just to be able to differentiate those. So looking forward to seeing that. What would really be cool in version 10 is if we could render Teslas as Tesla, as the Teslas they are. That would be kind of cool. So basically taking the, the copy of the avatars that you see in your respective car, Model S, X, or 3, and then representing that for other Teslas that it spots, sort of highlighting that it sees another Tesla. Uh, could be the, the beginnings of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication where Teslas can speak to one another, and by recognizing it and showing that it recognized, it would be another little cool feature that you could add to it. So hopefully they implement that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but that's something that would be very cool to see is just being able to render those different Teslas since you already have the visual models uh, based on the car that you're in. Autopilot 2, 2 Plus or 2X, however you want to call it, that's going to have all the latest and greatest autopilot features, give or take a few features here and there uh, based on you having 2 versus 2.5. Autopilot 1 is extremely limited, has lots of the, has almost none of the features that these new cars have in terms of visualization as well as um, uh, being able to see all around the car and, and making maneuvers such as emergency lane avoidance and lane departure avoidance as well. Okay, so know that if you're shopping for a Tesla, keep that in mind as to which autopilot you're getting. And then once we talk about hardware three, full self-driving computer, that'll be a whole separate video and we'll talk about whether you whether or not you get an upgrade from an autopilot two car to full self-driving, in which case you'll probably leap over autopilot 2.5 hardware. Okay, so traffic is stopping abruptly. The car is also stopping abruptly. So this is great. It keeps the distance. Again, I'm at distance one. And I think that's one of the things that I have a pet peeve about all versions of autopilot. Um, that's probably one negative I can talk about is the fact that, hey, when I set it to one, even though it's not necessarily car length, it's more like a timed interval, uh, it's too far away. Someone can easily cut in in front of me and prevent me from you know, keeping this distance. Right, and the car will slow down for the person cutting in. We talked about cutting detection before, so it's gonna slow down. But 
it very easy makes it very easy for someone to cut in. I would love for the car to get a little closer. And I remember earlier in, Ver in Autopilot 1, back in the early days of Autopilot 1, it did maintain a closer distance. Just making the auto lane change on its own here. Suggestion of the lane it's gonna go into now. And then you want the car to actually go there in just a second when it comes up to the appropriate turn. And that also might give me an opportunity to show the merging lane situation that I'm talking about. Okay, it's making the lane change, vibrates on the wheel and then starts to go over. Making the lane change all by itself. I didn't use any input here. My hands are, you know, pretty much here. And now it's in position to start to take the exit lane that it's going to take. But as on the way, you're going to see a merge. And again, the distance is too much now. Someone's cutting in because it didn't keep the proper distance. Again, my speed is set to 65. Uh, the car in front of me was going slower than that. So we could have kept that distance a little better and prevented that cut in. All right, so as we pass this exit coming up, you're gonna to start to see a bit of a, a lane merge if the dotted lines aren't there. Some roads have the dotted lines to distinguish between a, a, an exit, some don't. And when they don't, that's where autopilot kind of gets confused sometimes. Let's see if this one has it. It doesn't have it. So it gets confused, it's slowing down aggressively now. It doesn't know what to do. Now it resumes, right? And this car is kind of hanging over. Let's see what it does. If it reacts, it didn't really react. That was kind of scary. But okay, that's one. Now here's a lane merge coming up. And if it doesn't have the dotted lines, but it does, it's still gonna start to merge over. Now watch this, watch. Now it's gonna start to center. See, I'm centering right now. It shouldn't do that. It should stay straight. That's the problem. If we can fix that in version 10, we'll be all good. But until they fix that, that's still a problem. I got another merge here of a lane. And as the dotted line starts to fade away, if it does in this particular instance, it might not. As the line fades away, the car tries to center itself. Oh, which reminds me, one more point, bad point, negative point, if you will, or one point of constructive criticism for autopilot version nine, hardware two and 2.5 is the exits that it takes. Pretty aggressive stop here, handles it pretty well. It doesn't screech the tires. It doesn't make it uh, unbearable for the uh, car behind me, but it's pretty aggressive. But the other point that I wanted to make here is that when it takes the exit turn, depending on how your roads are, roads here in the, the New York metro area are pretty odd. Now it's not slowing down for these guys, but it slowed down for one. And so here's the line and what, look at the aggressive turn, aggressive turn right here. Look at that. That's horrible. We need to fix that, Elon. We need to fix that. But here's what the problem is. The roads are a little bit different here. This is the exit that we need to take. It's gonna turn over. And sometimes depending on your speed, it takes this exit very aggressively and gets very close to this line right here, very close to this lane line right here. Uh, and if there's a wall or a small margin uh, between a rail, it could potentially hit that. I had the car go over this line several times when trying to make a lane turn, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, an exit, trying to get on an exit ramp while being on navigate on autopilot. And again, not keeping the distance, lets this car cut in front of me because it doesn't keep the distance properly. My hand was on the wheel, it still asked me to apply a slight force, but that's another issue. So again, lane merges in, that's a problem. But then also the aggression on which it takes the uh, some of the exits, some of the exits, not all of them, but some of them, depending on what, what your road looks like. So if we could sort of calm that down, maybe slow down a little bit and then take the turn and leave a little bit of margin of error between this and this, as opposed to potentially colliding, I have to take over several times, potentially colliding into this, then it'll be okay. Now again, cut in, I, I stopped that one because again, the car just does not want to comply there. That was pretty much it for autopilot in version nine. Let me know your thoughts, what you think about version nine, what you hope to see in version 10. Obviously there's some leaks out there, but let's talk about it constructively and let's see if we can't get some feedback to Tesla so they can refine and make some last minute adjustments to fix version 10 if it isn't fixed already. Until the next video, enjoy your Tesla and enjoy your day.